Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm the Emperor, and this is, I think, the next big, big thing in, in streaming and stuff. Backpack Battles. It's currently out as a demo on Steam. Link down in the description. And I just want to show you, show you a single uh, run-through of it. We're going to play the Reaper class. In the demo, there are two classes, the Ranger and the Reaper. And I've been doing some of the Reaper. You can see my rank down here. I'm currently in the gold thing. And... Um, yeah, it's a very interesting little puzzle game. Uh, puzzle game auto battler thing. So we're going to do a new rank game. And how this works is basically you have your backpack here. You start out with certain things. Like we have this leather bag, which is just a four slot bag. We have this little fly agaric, which every five seconds inflicts some poison. Um, the tooltips are a little bit confusing at start. So at the top it says what it does. At the bottom, it explains a little bit of what that means. So, poison deals one damage per stack every two seconds. And then it has a food triggers 10% for each star. Food of a different type, not fly agaric. So, that means if you look around the item I'm hovering over, there's little stars. So, if we add other food items that are not the same as this one, then uh, this, will, this singular here will trigger 10% faster. So... Instead of every 5 seconds, it would be every 4.5 seconds or something. Not really, but um, you, you, you catch my drift. Like, the faster it goes, the faster it goes. Now, you start as a class, you have a thing. And the storage coffin for the Reaper class, it has um, 8 backpack slots. And everything inside, every time it activates, has a 25% chance to inflict some poison. So, basically, what you start out with is a damage over time type character. Now, um, one thing that I think is a little bit weird, you can rearrange everything, but if stuff is already in these, you can't move them around anymore. Um, is it, if you can see, this grid here is going to become quite important uh, to what we're doing here. So, at the start, I try to give us a little bit more space around there. So, what we need to do is build up our set now. We have 12 gold, we get 9 gold next round, uh, we have some health, we have some stamina. The thing about stamina is basically everything we use, or certain things like the pan here, it costs us 0 0.9 stamina per second. So if we have mana use, stamina usage very low, that's pretty good, so everything that we do use triggers quite often and is no, no big problem. But if we uh, put too many things that use stamina, then they're not going to trigger as we fight. You'll see that. Uh, for now, we're going to take this pan and put it around this fly agaric. So the pan itself gets plus one damage for each food in a star. Yeah. Right now, we only have this. Perfectly fine. We're going to re-roll it a moment, but we also like to get the piggy bank early on. So this doesn't trigger in combat, so it needn't be in the storage coffin. Because it won't have a chance of activating the damage debuff. So, no problem. This only happens once we enter the shop after we fight. So, there's a new storage thing. That's pretty good. We're going to reserve that. We can click here. So, every time this rerolls or we exit and enter the shop, that doesn't matter. Sometimes items are on sale, so they're cheaper. And if you reserve them like that, it's still going to be reserved. Now we have some healing herbs here, which I strongly recommend getting early, because you're going to see. And now we have no money left, meaning all we can do is really start our backpack battle. battle. Now we're going to be matched against someone in our rank, more or less, and we can see we're fighting against someone with two wooden swords, which, you know, they use more stamina than us. They do have a banana, though, so this heals and regenerates stamina. And it's a very close one right now. Um, let's unhide and talk through what the heck just happened, okay? So this is our opponent, this is us. Um, these things here, this is our first round, uh, this is our first win, we have still five health left. So if our, if we lose, we lose the health, and then that's done. Now look at this here, we can see our buffs and their buffs, our debuffs and their debuffs. Now our poison has been triggered out, so he has five poison, so every two seconds he gets five damage. Uh, he has one luck, so increases his accuracy by 5%. There is a chance you can miss. And uh, blind is on us, so we have a chance that we miss increased by 5%. But 
we have this little plant here. So this gives us two regeneration. So two health every two seconds comes back. Of course, he does have the banana. So this heals every five seconds for four. And he has the ranger bag. Uh, it's, um, you know... Items inside get 5% increased critical hit chance for each little luck thing. So he has a luck thing because it gives his luck. So he gets extra crit chance. That's how you kind of build. So the ranger is a crit build, basically, because your main bag, that's always going to be the same. We are a poison and they are a crit build. Personally, I much prefer the poison one, but I haven't tinkered around much with the, with the, the ranger. Now, we have five tries left, and we got something here. Now, the cool thing is, as far as I'm aware, you don't need to fill the trophies up to increase your rank in the ranking. If you just get pe fairly high, you still get some ranking, even if you don't manage to fill it up. You get some extra rank if you do a perfect run. Now, there's a lot of things uh, that are interesting right now to me to get. So, first of all, let's increase our storage base. And we're going to increase it around here. Now we get the banana. We just saw that's pretty good. And connected to our pan, that's extra good. And we want it going in there. Now we get the garlic. That's another food item and it works here. And the banana as well triggers 10% faster for each different food type. Food basically works together. If you have food next to each other, they boost each other in their triggering speed. We have one gold left. Doesn't really matter to us. I don't I'm gonna buy but the pan for each food gets plus one damage so this gets plus three damage right now because we have different foods around it let's go and we have these angled so they go into our coffin so each of these items every time they trigger has a 10% chance a 25% chance to inflict a debuff which is quite strong now they have healing and luck as well so they're gonna be a bit of a tougher nut to crack they might actually defeat us they might not but they very well might. Okay, it was a super close one. Happens perfectly fine. We're not going to analyze it uh, beyond that. But, uh, okay, there's more storage for us. And another garlic. Which we're going to put like that. So it interacts with the flyer garlic. And it works for the pan. Good stuff all around. We're still on low stamina usage. So we could consider getting us something else. And apparently, the broom and the pan together if we put them next to each other are gonna interact in some way so i've not done that yet um and i'm curious to see what happens if we do so we're gonna switch things around a little bit here uh let's see we need to turn the pan like that and we need to get this over here we need the space for the broom basically so now we can put that here, and that will become a shovel, <laughs> these two together. Okay, we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, now our stamina usage is high, so there's a good chance that during battle, our stamina is going to be too low when these are supposed to trigger. Yeah? So each time this thing triggers, it's going to use some stamina. We regenerate it over time, so that's fine. But, you know, might not go our way. So we have some healing, they don't, that's the only reason we're winning, really. Uh, plus, we have a lot of garlic, and garlic gives us some defense. Defense, these little shields, they take away the damage. Now, we have this shovel, and the shovel does the following. It um, gives us on hit a 40% chance to inflict some blind. And when we enter the shop, it's going to dig up a random item. I don't, I'm not quite sure what that means. Maybe it goes directly into storage. Um, but we definitely want to move things around a little bit. So, for example, I don't want to take up too many slots with the shovel in here. That doesn't make much sense. Now that the pan is gone, we don't have the interactivity of the food items anymore in the same amount. Our stamina usage is back to low. So, uh, you can see things interacting. Like, this is blue line here. And if you put them next to each other, then they're going to morph into something, potentially. We're not going to do that with the piggy because I know that this just crushes the piggy and we are going to take the dagger instead of a uh, hammer because, um, well, this is a pretty good weapon, honestly. It, it triggers very fast and costs zero stamina. 
Um, so this this goes pretty well. It's fine. Like 3.5 seconds, it just attacks and deals damage. So why wouldn't we want this? Now, another thing we can do is get the fanny pack here. This gives us two extra slots, but it also... And that's going to be fun. So we're going to turn this like that. And maybe... No, I want the banana pumped. Okay, let me think about this. I can't really... <laughs> See, that's where the game genius really sets in. Now I want to have the banana in the coffin. I want this on the fanny pack as well, so it triggers quicker. Um, but by doing so, I break the banana connection. So I make the banana weaker, arguably. Now I could try and move this around. But that kicks out the banana entirely. So I would have to find a different way of slotting the banana. But that doesn't really work. So we're going to stay like that. Uh, put the garlic in a way that it also goes into the coffin. So that's a little bit better. Um, we still have a little bit of gold, but not too much. I don't want a second broom. So we're just going to roll. And okay, we got a piece of coal, which is pretty good. We're going to reserve the healing because that's going to come in handy. Now, certain things I don't put in here, because this only triggers at the start of battle, this triggers only when we enter the shop, so it doesn't really matter. But this here, I could move down one more. So now we get this nice little cross, uh, cross connection there, and the banana is unaffected, like we don't lose anything on the banana. So that's pretty good. We could get a coal, so after three seconds we gain a random buff, and the enemy gets a random debuff. Doesn't really matter. Uh, we could put it into a weapon, so there's a 70% chance the weapon deals some extra damage. I generally would suggest getting everything you can. Start of battle, in inflict some blind. Um, but sometimes it makes sense to save up gold as well. So we're gonna leave it here and just go into battle. <laughs> might not go well, might go well. Okay, there's a lot of uh, garlic and a lot of bananas. So he might actually defeat us because he's gonna have more shields. He's going to have more stamina regeneration. The only thing he's lacking right now is health regeneration. So if we manage our debuffs to stack up high enough. And I don't think um, the block actually blocks the, the stamina here. The, the poison, I'm not quite sure. There is a chance we win. And you saw with the high debuff, we just ate through his health. Even though it looked a little bit eh, problematic for a moment. So this is on sale. That's nice. We don't write... Don't have a good spot to put it, but we're definitely going to get this up here. And you can see the health potion here. That would like to interact with one of these things. So we're going to take our piggy. Turn this like that. Doesn't really matter what position. It just needs to connect with one of these. So this is going to morph in here, increasing the power of this. Um, so the health potion is pretty cool. It cleanses away some poison. And if we get this up, that's going to help us as well. I do want to put this somewhere here though. Um, because that's actually pretty good. But we'll see. So for now let's put the coal somewhere else. Doesn't really matter. It's just a one slot thing. So let's re-roll, see if we can find something good <clears throat> that I want. Oh, the dragon egg. Oh, and it's on sale. So we can't use it straight away. Uh, but we're gonna buy it. I don't actually want this anymore. I want to go for the dragon egg now. Uh, especially since this will burn the coal and the coal will then be a cooler thing, <laughs> basically. We could think about slotting this in here already. So let's try this. We, we, we put it here. Now we lose the banana. Question is, is that such a big problem? Potentially. But the dragon egg, it needs uh, two turns. As, a, as you can see, hatches after two rounds in your backpack. So it will reflect two debuffs, meaning the enemy gets them instead of us. Already, as it is. But we need to fight with it a bunch until it becomes a dragon. And the dragon is going to be real good. So let's go get in there. Okay, we have a lot of bananas. And uh, these claws of attacks especially are kind of horrible. Um, so we'll see whether or not we can win this even. We have four regeneration now because we have two of these health things and we have a potion that'll help us. So if we can just manage to get the debuff high enough, 
we might win this despite it looking pretty gnarly for us. There we go. That's why I say regeneration is, is really, really good in this game. So we managed to get a burning coal. And on hit chance to deal plus 6 damage and gain some speed. You can see down there, heat. All items trigger 2% faster per stack. So that is actually really, 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 really strong. And we're going to put it on this thing because, again, this doesn't need any stamina to trigger. This just triggers every 3.5 seconds. Um, so that's pretty good on there, the coal. Um... Right, we have a blueberry that we could throw in there for very little money. And it would help with the fly here. So that's pretty cool. Um, the flop. Okay, we could we could put two fly agaric into Goobert. But we're not gonna. Actually, we still had one blueberry here. Oh, we can put it there. That's fine. So now the strong health potion is a strong health potion. It was a health potion before, but it absorbed one of these. It can't absorb two, it can only absorb one. And this is basically what it is. So now we get way more health. We gain still the two regeneration from this once it triggers. It doesn't start right at the beginning, but we get it eventually. So uh, that's all pretty, pretty darn great. Now another thing we could consider is buying this bag. And if we put it right here, we can put our banana back in, you know? It doesn't do much, it's not perfectly positioned at all, but there we can put it. Right there we have the space to do so. Um, the egg next round is gonna match, uh, start, and then we can work with it. Let's sell the, the pig because we don't actually have space and we're not gonna use it anymore. Oh, perfect. So there's a big shield which is pretty good. Uh, it's even better if you have things that generate block, like the garlic. Um, but we definitely want to get the storage pretty much right away. We don't have to put it up right now, because we don't really have anything to put in there. But we might want to reserve the shield. Let's see, we have another flyer, Garrick, uh, that we can quite afford. And our mana usage, our stamina usage is still low. So, let's put this up here. You have to aim properly. So, now we could use this like that and put this here there wait no that's fine and now we put this up there just to get the bonus point basically we could switch this around nah that's all good that's all pretty good all right perfect now, the blueberries I personally don't like too much, but uh, after we get some mana out of these, we get some luck, so uh, it's, not, it's not the worst thing. All right, let's start. Let's go. For friendship and money. Now, personally, I was a little bit put off by the art style first, but honestly, the gameplay is just... is just top-notch. So we are good on healing. Once our health potion triggers at 50% health, we get some more regeneration even. We have one heat already, so all items trigger 5% faster. And no contest even. And we have a hatching. So now we have a little dragon. And the dragon is going to burn that piece of coal here. Uh, the other burning piece of coal would also burn it, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, and I think the shovel dug up the piece of coal, that's why we even have it. Now, the problem with this shield here is basically space. We need space to put it. I see something I like. Uh, we're going to get this for sure. We're going to get the stamina pack because this not only gives us more room, but it also um, increases our stamina by one. So that thing is really actually quite good. Uh, we could get these gloves here, triggering stuff a little bit quicker. So if we... Oh, we get this. Pestilence flask. That might work quite well. Let's get this. And... How would it interact with the burning coal? Oh, it would make this a poison dagger. Okay, let's turn it into a poison dagger. That's perfectly fine. I thought it would interact with coal, but... Again, maximize what you have in here. It's uh, it's definitely good for you. Oh, they have this thing, Blood thro Thorn. That's a really, really strong weapon. Uh, it converts healing into 
into vampirism, but he doesn't have any healing, so... Uh, you need to have your items in track with each other. Like, he has some cool stuff there, but our items have a greater level of synergy. Okay, so the specialist of offers choose a subclass. So now we um, basically, at, at a certain time, I think at six wins or five wins or somewhere, like round eight maybe, that's where it is, um, we get to choose one of these items. You can't get all of them. The others are going to vanish depending on what you pick. So we can become a Hexblade, a Vampiress, or a Witch. So um, this thing is actually pretty cool. Um, fatigue at nightfall, both characters take increasing fatigue damage every second. So every three seconds, inflict fatigue damage on debuffed, 25% chance to inflict the same debuff. So this thing, um, since we're working on poison quite heavily, would extremely increase this. And any item that is in the little um, in the little stars is going to trigger 100% faster during fatigue. So at night, we just have to survive until nightfall and then we become real strong. Um, we also burned our little coal here. <clears throat> oh, actually, we have two burning coals because this got boinked out of our, um, out of our dagger as the dagger morphed into something new. And we have this, so we're going to put it on our dragon. And now we need to put the witch somewhere. Somewhere sensible. Ideally, you want the witch thing somewhere where it hits multiple things. So here would hit the dagger. We're kicking out a few things. It's not so bad. It's not a problem. We needn't worry about that. Um, we can just put these back in. And we put them back in in a place where it makes some sense. Sort of. At least. Somewhat. Ah, that's a perfect spot. And we can just move this over here where it doesn't really matter. And we can put this right there so this works together. Now we have a crystal here. And uh, this crystal will do different things depending on where you put it. Weapon socket. If the opponent is below 30 health, this deals 50% damage. The weapon then is socketed into. Um, armor and other sockets, you gain 6 shield on seven debuffs inflicted which is actually really good for us except uh we don't have any sort of armor yet we might get this eventually but uh honestly probably not this round because we do need the space for it of course we could always kind of decide to go a little bit of a different route and start selling some stuff make some room like that but personally i'm fairly happy with what we got and it has been working historically so let's do another roll maybe we get some storage or something good oh a fanfare Every one second, remove one stamina from your opponent and increase the cooldown by 0 0.8 seconds. Uh, five items in front. After five activations of fanfare, stand for one second. So this would be really good in combination with our dagger. Uh, we might take it for our... Hmm. So this basically needs five items. So here it becomes a, a matter of where you put it. And where you even have the space, right? Uh, so this wouldn't work. This would work. But we can't put it on this side. Because even if we had the space, we don't have the space. So let's ignore the shield for now. Ignore this as well. Uh, I would like the fanfare. It's on sale. Again, if we re-roll, the fanfare is going to stay. Uh, we also have this. Which doesn't really interact with anything right now. But it might. So always nice to think. We're not going to talk about everything. We see just how we might want to do a build here. So we need three slots for this, and we might have to rearrange all of it. So um, let's let's maybe start with that. So we're going to put everything out, everything into storage. And this is, I think, the worst bit of the game yet. I don't think there is a button or a click combination or anything to really do this, to get everything down into storage, because you cannot move the whole thing. I wish you could move the whole thing as it were, uh, because now I don't remember how I had anything set up in here. Now we can move it again. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to move that. We're going to buy this, put it there. And we'll just see if we can't set this up again somehow that it makes sense. And we have these bags as well uh, to build more in this direction. And then we move this down here. Okay, so we want the fanfare. That, that's kind of what we what we want. So we need to make sure that we have five different items in this direction. So let's try 
and build up like that. Can put the dagger here. Now the shovel we just put there, maybe? I don't know, that takes up way too much space here. So we're gonna slot this around. So each of these only takes one slot in the coffin. The more things we have that are individual things in the coffin, the better it is. Let's see. We can just put a garlic here. And now we put a blueberry there, and that's all five for the fanfare. Now the dragon doesn't trigger on this anymore, but that's fine. We just want the dragon to trigger at all. Now we might have to replace one of these here. Like so. Put that there, because we definitely want the little dolly in here. And we can put this there, so this triggers the dagger and this 100% faster. Now these don't really matter, they only trigger once at the start. This matters a little bit, um, not for the speed up that we get here. Okay, so now we rearranged everything. It works kind of fine. We don't have the perfect synergies everywhere, but we got what we wanted. So this is going to do a stun. After five activations of fanfare. So after five seconds, it's going to stun the enemy for one second. And this thing here says on stun triggers extra attack. Yeah? So keep in mind the things that you got going here. And there's a lot going. There's a whole lot going on here. This might not look very strong because we have a very few, uh, we have a bunch of very basic items. But in combination, thinking about what we're doing. This is going to be pretty darn strong. And our stamina usage being low means we can attack a whole lot. Like, okay, this might be a difficult opponent for us. Let's see. Our little dragon pops up down here and spews fire. So they have nine regeneration. That's going to be a big issue for us, I think. But our potion hasn't even triggered yet, so... Yeah, no problem. Look at that. I love this about this game. These bags look so unassuming. Looks so unassuming. You don't know exactly what's going on. Oh, and we dug up another health thing. Ah, good stuff. So, um, we could put this in a weapon. But I don't think we want to. I don't think I want to buy any of what we got on. I mean, this in combination would be good, but it's 17 gold, uh, 14 gold. And we don't even have space to put it anywhere. So, this here will work with banana. So let's get us another bag where we can put this thing, which we got for free from our shovel. This doesn't matter much to us, but we could use this and uh, get the banana into a potion, which essentially makes it a little bit better. But we'll have to move these things around a little bit for a while. Okay, so now this will become a strong heroic potion. Consume this and regenerate two stamina and gain one empower. Weapon damage is increased by one per stack. Um, so this is pretty good. Now we have two potions. I'm going to show you later. There's some interaction on the on the potions. But right now we don't really have any room for that. Oh, with our stamina usage being low, we might want to opt for another big weapon. And this being on sale is actually a, pr a pretty good thing. We could instead take these two. And uh, Thorn Whip and Hungry Blade are going to work together. But we don't really have anything that works for what they are. Like We could convert our uh, regeneration into vampirism. That helps a little bit. But um, I don't know. We don't generate thorns anywhere. So I'd, instead I would like to get Ripsaw Blade. Because this removes thorns and regeneration from our opponent. Which is, I think, the most dangerous to us. Because we are banking on hitting fast and hitting a lot. And uh, outgunning their regeneration. So Ripsaw might actually be a really good addition to what we already have. And I'm happy to get rid of a few blueberries here. Okay, we're fighting another witch. Let's see which witch is better suited. They have this little card game set up here. Uh, which is pretty well done. So, I don't know. They might win. But, okay. Our potion comes in. We have 8 regeneration. They have 8 regeneration. But look at our debuffing. Look at that. We have 32 debuffs on them. They have 16 on us. So this was pretty good. Uh, let's check this out. So they have a card deck. 
And the card deck basically works through all attached cards here, you can see. There's a whole lot of build variety here, really. Personally, I just realized like high re regeneration and high debuffs. That's that's kind of where I go. Um, and there's a log little thing, so you can see kind of what happened when, if you're getting really confused about getting a big hit or something. Uh, so now our heroic st potion is heroic, and we have some new spaces. So we could potentially put in the Ripsaw Blade. We need to put this in to keep the fanfare going. And I think I'm gonna go like that. Ripsaw Blade needs some more room, but we can get this bag here, which adds exactly the amount of space we need for the Ripsaw Blade. And now we have high stamina usage, so that might not work super well in our favor. We got a chip to pass, unearthed from our shovel. So, in the backpack, every 11 seconds regenerates 1.5 stamina. And if our stamina is full, we get some heat. On a weapon, attacks 10% faster. Honestly, that definitely goes on our blade, so it attacks 10% faster. This isn't ideally placed in terms of... It doesn't get a, a fanny pack speed up or anything, so it's not really great. Uh, let's let's rethink this real quick. So if we use the potion, for example, like that, maybe you've already spotted it. Uh, let's see. This wasn't interacting with anything anyway. Okay. So we've done several things right now. First of all, we put the potions in a way that they interact with the, with each other. Like the top potion always flows down into the bottom potion, meaning um, that this potion now. The, the strong heroic potion also gives a little bit of health. Not just what it does. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, if you want to go for potions, you can do that. And we put the ripsaw blade in a way where it interacts with the fanny pack. So it triggers 10% faster. And it has a topaz in. So attacks 10% faster. So it's 20% faster already. I'm not sure if it's like cumulative or not, but... I bet you. Once this game is out, once everyone gets their claws in this, this is going to be one of those hyper-analyzed, super-strategized games. But since the shop is kind of randomized every time, you might not get the perfect builds. And I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm generally not too good with these types of games, but honestly, this is working really, really well for me. Um, so here we have a little bit of a problem. Uh, we might want to address by simply moving one of blueberry over there Which actually is much better than what we had because now this can trigger the blueberry more often which you know Isn't isn't super strong obviously it's much rather had something else trigger there um, And we actually might do that honestly we might put our dragon there instead uh, So let's do that real quick. We put all this away um, Yeah, 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 yeah just a moment, don't you worry. We're gonna put everything back just as it were in a little while. Wait, can we even do that? Yeah, we have to... We just have to redo the whole top row, kinda. Just move it over slightly. Like that. Now we can put the dragon here, so he's affected by this. And we put this thing back like that. So it flows down. You can put this here, it doesn't really matter. We put the toadstool there. It would like to interact with uh, Goobert, but that doesn't really matter to us. We put this there because it helps with this. We put this here because it also helps with this. Um, oh wait, no. We put this here, even better. Put this there. Wait, no, we can do this better. We can move this up here so it interacts with the garlic. And this here, et voila. Now the Mr. Struggles here increases how quickly our Ruby Whelp attacks, which also costs us zero stamina. That's why it's a really, really strong thing. Uh, so we have two weapons right now. We have the Poison Dagger and the Ruby Whelp, which will always attack even if we have zero stamina. Crazy strong, crazy, crazy strong. So let's get into it. We have two battles left to win and four tries left to try and achieve it. So let's look at this here. Yeah, our debuffs are pumping. He has some Ripsaw uh, Blade as well, so he's gonna take away our regen, which we rely on heavily. That's okay, we still have our, yeah, no, no contest even. 
no contest whatsoever. Like, he is doing some good stuff here as well. He's building some items. He's getting places. But, yeah, we just... Look at that. There's a much smaller amount of interactivity. What I'm missing right now, honestly, is... Oh, that's the piercing arrow. That's their uh, class thing that they got. So, ours is much easier to use. And, yeah, it's... Uh, Literally no contest. Crazy. So we have one battle left and we have four attempts to win. Now toward the end, there's always a good chance. Oh, lovely. Lovely. We get another burning coal. So we could uh, burn this up. Perfect. 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 That's great. Um, so toward the end, you're going to meet quite powerful enemies. Quite powerful. So... We might not be as lucky as we have been so far. Opponent drops below 50. Consume this and deal 0.3 for each debuff on your opponent. Oh, that's great for us. So we're going to take this. And quite honestly, we would have to redo the whole thing again to get um, more interactivity between the potions. I'm not willing to do that right now. I will accept that uh, we're not going to get the best out of here. Uh, let's think about this for a second. Can I move this around maintaining the same? No, I really can't. I would have to redo the whole thing. And that is my main problem here. Like, you can only move individual things, but you cannot move the whole thing. At least I don't know if there's an option for it. So, that's not great. Uh, honestly, I'm pretty happy with this build. We might not even need to re-roll. Um... But we're gonna, we'll, we'll see what we can get. We can get another backpack here. And with that, we could get this. How much space do we have down here? Two. Wait. So the gin lamp every two seconds gains us a luck or a thorn or a mana and it will use a lot of stuff and potentially increase a weapon. It's not gonna. <laughs> like we, we don't generate any of this stuff but uh, you know might as well try. Might as well try. I'm still considering, I'm still thinking about how we could rearrange this, but I would like this bottle in there. And I think the best spot for it is here. Like, this is the least good thing that we have in our positioning here. This is going to be fine. Let's go. But again, now we are at the end here. So we're only meeting people that are also on the end. And they have a lot of uh, defense that they start out with. That's pretty crazy. But we have worked through it. And now our debuffs are coming in. And yeah. The gin lamp went completely nuts. And we won. So now, interesting enough, I've never, I've never taken this. So we can get a ranking change of plus 21. Flat. Or we can do another seven rounds and get a potential ranking change between plus eight and between 40. Which I think is a little bit weird because you definitely get to 21. You could get uh, the plus 40. We would get another heart to make it a little bit easier to win in survival mode. I'm a, I'm a person erring on the side of caution and this video is quite long already. So we're going to take the, the win here and um, this gets us all the trophies here. And it will do a little bit of a ranking change. And now we have 75 gold, basically. And with this here, sadly, we're quite short of it. But with these trophies, you can then unlock cosmetics for your character. So the least is always 100 gold and or 100 trophies. And you can basically play a little bit dress up with your character, which I think is very cute. Um... Yeah, and there you have it. That's Backpack Battles. And I strongly recommend you check this out. Really. Like, this, this is one of the those games that has sucked up way too much time of my life. 
We might play a little bit on, on the stream, so if you're not already a follower on Twitch, maybe go check that out as well. We play, uh, we stream three times a week at the moment. And if you're new on the YouTube, maybe leave a subscription as well. We're mainly doing Grand Strategy stuff and a little bit of TTB RPG stuff, but uh, sometimes we check out games like this, and I feel like Backpack Battles is gonna gonna pop up a few more times, maybe, depending. If, if I start getting worse at this game and get uh, wrecked every time, I might not care about it anymore, but right now I'm fairly decent at it, so I care about it. Anyway, that's it for me for today. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Do you think this game is gonna be big once it fully releases? Because I firmly believe it does. Uh, let me know why or why not you think this is something that's gonna have some mass appeal. Um... Thank you so much for watching and see you around. Until then, bye-bye.